Shalom, family. In this two-part discussion, we will show you the importance of fortifying our minds as well as how to fortify our minds. So make sure you watch both parts because we know that these messages are needed and will be helpful to you in the days that we are living in. What comes to your mind when you think of a tall fence with barbed wire along the top, a bank vault, iron gates, a moat with a drawbridge around a structure, metal bars on a house, windows, or door, a border wall, Fort Knox. What it makes us think about is fortification, which can be buildings, walls, fences, ditches, and other things that are built to strengthen and safeguard a place, making it more difficult to attack. Fortification is important because it protects. It keeps things that should be out, out, and what needs to be in, in. Although it is necessary to fortify things like homes, foundations, property, things of value and such, it is very, very important to fortify our minds in these days and times we are living in. Before we get into why we believe it's important to fortify our minds and how, we want to make sure we all know what the mind is according to scripture. Let's look at this passage in Romans that we will use as a starting place to better grasp this meaning. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you prove what is that good and well-pleasing and perfect desire of Elohim. Romans 12.2 The word mind in this scripture is referenced in the concordance as G3563. The mind, comprising alike the faculties of perceiving and understanding and those of feeling, judging, determining. The intellectual faculty, the understanding. Reason in the narrower sense as a capacity for spiritual truth, the higher powers of the soul. The faculty of perceiving divine things, of recognizing goodness and of hating evil. The power of considering and judging soberly, calmly and impartially. A particular mode of thinking and judging. Thoughts, feelings, purposes, desires. Let's also look at another scripture using the word mind. And you shall love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart, and with all your being, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first command. Mark 12, 30. The word mind reference in this scripture is G1271. The mind as a faculty of understanding, feeling, desiring, understanding, spirit, way of thinking and feeling, thoughts, either good or bad. When we look at both entries, we see that the mind is, in essence, what we use to determine the way we think and use judgment. It is where our intellect and intentions are housed. It is the way that we perceive, understand, and reason, which will ultimately result in what actions we will or will not take. Belief in the Most High Yahuwah and Yahusha begins in the mind. Now let's look up the word fortify. Fortify is defined as to surround with a wall, ditch, palisades, or other works with a view to defend against the attacks of an enemy, to strengthen and secure by forts, batteries, and other works of art, as to fortify a city, town, or harbor, to strengthen against any attack, as to fortify the mind against sudden calamity, to confirm, to add strength and firmness to, as to fortify an opinion or resolution, to fortify hope or desire, to furnish with strength or means of resisting force, violence, or assault. Now fortify used in scripture, H553, to be strong, alert, courageous, brave, stout, bold, solid, hard. H2388, to strengthen, prevail, harden, be strong, become strong, 
Be courageous, be firm, grow firm, be resolute to strengthen oneself, to hold strongly to, to prevail, to display strength, to support, to repair, to have or take or keep hold of, retain, make rigid, to press, to be urgent. Here is why we believe it is important to fortify your minds and to keep your mind fortified now more than ever. There are things coming to this earth that man has not seen. Fortification of our minds will help us to be better prepared for these things to come. Did you ever think that we would be seeing news stories about UFOs and aliens crash landing in people's backyards? How about the Bible being a banned book in elementary and middle school libraries because of vulgarity and violence? This took place in Utah, and after a few weeks, they reversed their decision. Meanwhile, other abominable books are being fully accepted at schools in many states. There are talks of removal of paper money for digital currency. Unusual weather events. Talks of blackouts and power grids failing. Food shortages. Military conducting drills in major cities across America. and the list goes on and on. But this is nothing according to scripture. In Matthew 24, the Talmudim disciples asked Yehusha what will be the signs of his coming and of the end of age. That's in verse three. He begins to tell them what is to come. People coming in his name, leading people astray, verse five. Hearing of wars and rumors of wars, not to be troubled because these things have to take place, but that is not the end. Verse six, talks of nations rising against nations, scarcities of food, deadly diseases and earthquakes. Verse seven, these are just the beginning, stumbling, people being delivered up to be killed and being hated for his name's sake. Verse, verses eight through 10. False prophets shall rise and lead people astray. Lawlessness and the love of many shall become cold. Verses 11 and 12. Yahushua continues to give instruction on what to do in verses 15 through 20. The next verse is what we want to draw your attention to. For then there shall be great distress, such as has not been seen since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. Matthew 24, 21. Here are some more scripture that also reference the things that will come. Keep in mind, as we read these scriptures, this is not to cause you to fear. It is to let you know so that you can prepare for the things that will take place. Daniel 12, 1 and 2. Now at that time, Michael shall stand up, the great head who is standing over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of distress such as never was since there was a nation until that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth wake up, some to everlasting kai, and some to reproaches, everlasting abhorrence. Luke chapter 21, similar to Matthew 24, has something else we want to point out starting in verse 22. Because these are days of vengeance to fill all that have been written, and woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing children in those days, for there shall be great distress in the earth and wrath upon this people, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. And Yerushalayim shall be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles 
until the time of the Gentiles are filled. And there shall be signs in the sun and moon and stars, and on the earth anxiety of nations, in bewilderment at the roaring of the sea and agitation, men fainting from fear and the expectation of what is coming on the earth. For the powers of the Shamaim shall be shaken. Things will not be getting better in the world. So we need to get and keep our minds right. Because the scriptures we just read tell us what will be happening in these end times, we can't and don't want to wait until it gets worse to prepare. We must be ready now in order to endure until the end. Luke chapter 21 verse 26 says that men will faint because of fear. In some Bible versions, it says men's hearts will fail them because of fear. We must keep our minds fortified because as things continue to get worse, we might not be able to have the time needed to build ourselves up in the word. Things will be very intense. Think about that for a moment. Things are going to be so distressing that it will cause people's hearts to faint or fail. That won't be the time to try and get the word on the inside. As a matter of fact, it will be too late. We have to fortify our minds now to keep our focus where it needs to be and to be as ready as we can for what is to come. There could be a time coming in the future where scripture may be taken away from us, replaced and or changed. Certain groups of people are saying that they deem the word as hate speech and they are fighting to silence the word. We also see that certain versions of the Bible shouldn't even be considered translations like the Message or the Passion translation, to name a few, as they are not actual translations because they change the meaning of much of the original context of Scripture, and there are some major errors and inaccuracies. There was even a discussion on how AI could write or rewrite a Bible. Check this out. Increasingly, we apply to a bank to get a loan. It's an AI making the decisions about us. So it takes power away from us. The third thing about AI that everybody needs to know, it's the first technology ever that can create new ideas. You know, the printing press, radio, television, they broadcast, they spread the ideas created by the human brain, by the human mind, they cannot create a new idea. You know, Gutenberg printed the Bible in the middle of the 15th century. The, the, the printing press printed as many copies of the Bible as Gutenberg instructed it, but it did not create a single new page. It had no ideas of its own about the Bible. Is it good? Is it bad? How to interpret this? How to interpret that? Um, AI can create new ideas, can even write a new Bible. We, you know, throughout history, religions dreamt about having a book written by a superhuman intelligence, by a non-human entity. Every religion claims our book, all the other books of the other religions, they, humans wrote them. But our book, no, 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 no. It came from some superhuman intelligence. In a few years, there might be religions that are actually correct that just think about a religion whose holy book is written by an AI. That could be a reality in a few years. We have to have the word hidden in our hearts and on our minds constantly, because there could be a time where the word is banned and we won't be able to freely or legally read it. If we take the time now to fortify our minds with scripture, it will be stored in a safe place in our hearts where we can pull it out to stand on or think on when we need it. 
We also have to remember that the word tells us that the enemy comes to steal the word. So we have to be on guard. These then are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. And when they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Mark 4:15. What we think on in our minds is stored in our hearts. So if the enemy is able to take away the word from our hearts, he can take away what is in our minds with his many distractions and other weapons he uses to steal the word. Fortifying our mind is a necessity so that we will not be deceived. As to the coming of our Athan, Yahushua HaMashiach, and our gathering together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as if the day of Yahuwah has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, because the falling away is to come first, and the man of lawlessness is to be revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Elohim or that is worshipped, so that he sits as Elohim in the Mishkan of Elohim, showing himself that he is Elohim. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 4. Therefore, as you accepted Mashiach Yahushua, the Athan, walk in him, having been rooted and built up in him, and established in the belief, as you were taught, overflowing in it with thanksgiving. See to it that no one makes a prey of you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the traditions of men, according to the elementary matters of the world, and not according to Mashiach. Colossians 2, 6 through 8. Yahuwah doesn't want us to be unaware or caught off guard regarding the things that are to come, so he has given us warnings in his word. We need to have our minds built up and focused on the right things, and that means we need to have our minds on Yahuwah and the things of Yahuwah's kingdom. This will determine what we will or will not do, whether good or bad, wrong or right. We are going to continue this message with how to fortify your mind in part two. So please make sure you are subscribed and have your notifications on so you can be notified when this comes out. If you haven't done so already, please like, share, and subscribe. Please also be sure to check out our other videos. Lastly, we want you to know that we are praying for you, brothers and sisters. May the Most High Yah guard you and keep you. We hope to see you back here soon. Until next time, Shalom. Shalom.